Rowing for me is an effort reward relationship. The effort you put in is what you'll get out of it. Mentally you have to be strong and just willing to be there for your mates. So you have to be able to trust each other and you just build those um, relationships. It's something unlike anything else. It's always bigger than you. You're never rowing for yourself. You're rowing for something bigger than yourself. There's a lot of life learning in rowing for me that stands out and I feel um, the boys at Nudgee certainly have that great experience. Rowing is a family. It's something we all do together. Sometimes we all hate it together, but we're always in it together. You want to do it for every guy in that boat because of everything you've gone through in that season. Just to get a sense of pride and victory towards the end of it, after six months of training, throw it all down in one race. Squeeze, build, snap, send. Alright boys, we're in the mix. But I want to move up one seat, one seat now. Up one, and let's pound it. That's 7.50 down. Last time together, boys. Last time. And let's give it to them. These we got to go up. We're moving on, Scotch. That's it. Pound and the legs are going. Pound. Up and Sam going. we got to pick it up. One point with me, Sambo. Yes, Nudge! Now we're coming up to the finish line. It's a dog fight. We're going. Ready, transition, they're moving, we gotta pick it up. Lift, not lift, lift! Legs down, coming along that stroke, keep it up. I'm on that cock, up, up. How you going, mate? Good, how are you? Good, buddy. Good, good, good. So I'll just get this up and then I'll... What we're doing this week with our main exercises, so our back squat and our pull up, the intensity is going up. You'll see the weight on your programs. Okay, so we're still making sure we're getting that range even though the load is going up. All right, let's go. Let's jump up, get the ropes. So we're currently um, in the in-season phase, so we're about five weeks out um, from Hedda River. Uh, and this stage we're focusing a bit more on that strength development as well as introducing um, some power based exercises. Oh, no, no, good, Paddy Long. Now I'm straight, head up, let's go. Oh, Kilo's arm's straight, come on, what's stiff? Like you're hanging off the bar. Now we've got some speed here. Get some height, go! So we're trying to get these boys to move quickly with some lighter loads, but then also the main focus of the program is to actually try and lift as much weight as they possibly can within their technical capacities. Here we go, the slowest man in the world. Let's see how he moves. Told ya. <laughs> Rowing is an incredibly tough sport, a mentally challenging sport where you've got to push yourself constantly to the limit. So what we look for in rowers is actually a mentally strong athlete and, and someone that can deal with the, the training volumes, the 10 sessions a week, but then also are able to achieve long lengths through their levers. Good. Let's go. Let's get it up. Let's get it up. Get it, go, get it. Go. Squash my hand. Squash, 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 squash. Good. As you fatigue, you want to keep that pressure on my hand or pressure on the floor. Come up to a little bit there. So generally, rowers have the long arms. Taller rowers through basic biomechanics uh, are generally the better rowers, but that doesn't exclude the shorter rowers at all. We got push-ups to go. Come in. Reminder. Records are here. Leighton Frederick sitting at 60. Okay, you remember you're going on my call? Let's go. One. Two. Ten. Those backs aren't strong. It will, I will end you, okay? Twelve. Fifteen. Everything goes down as well. Twenty-one. These guys are training at at least ten times a week. Double sessions, sometimes triple sessions on the weekends. The first day they're looking at um, a race that's going to go for about five and a half to six minutes. With that, it's required an awful lot of strength, but even more so, the endurance capacity is enormous. So that's where we put a lot of our time in, is understanding about a heavy move, heavy loads, but be able to do it repetitively. 
No dice. 45. Better never stop. 51. 52. 60. 63. 63. Well done. New record. New record. Well done. Few sports thrive in the precious early hours of the morning, but rowing basks in the darkness and then flourishes in the first light over the water. It is a calling, more of a lifestyle choice than a sport. Um, on a Tuesday, it's about 3.45. But um, most other days it's around four. Been doing it for a while now. I think this is nine, nine years at the shed. So sort of get used to it. So we're just going to do power work. Yeah. Maybe you that. My first job to get here, obviously, is to take the skull racks out. Just get the shed sort of prepared for when the boys get here. As we get here a bit earlier on a Tuesday, um, just gives them that opportunity just to drop the bags off, get down, and really just keep straight away focus on the, on the rowing and what they've got to do. Like, that's why I'm still here, like, I love it. Other than that, just getting all the oars down. If we need to tinker with the boat, we might do that. How come you're so late? How come you're so late? How come you're so late? We are. It, it took four ages to get in here. Was he there at five? Okay. Ah, uh, fellas, after we do our warm up, uh, we're just going to really accentuate that outside arm and, the, and particularly the the blade placement and it should you really should be able to feel it in sixes with the boat not moving so quickly and then uh we're going to do whole crew and then a little bit of cha-cha getting ready for saturday okay let's go not too high guys roll it down one being aware of the hand height and this session we're really going to focus at the catch getting those hands off at the catch hands off and as we warm up, letting that outside hand sweep out over that rigger gunnel. Zane looking at his outside shoulder. You need to get a point on his outside shoulder. And Sammy, as we come forward, depending on that inside cheek of yours, we want to stay tall. Sam, are you OK? Hey, Sponge, mate, are you down the boat shed? Mate, you haven't got a uh, male or female, a, a, a good rower who could slot into our first eight for this morning, have you? And five and six coming in, and two. Is she OK? Is she of a reasonable standard, eh? OK, well, mate, we're just coming around past GPS. Okay, thanks for that, Sponge. See you, mate, bye. Mate, Sam's got a boil on his bum. You can tell he's... He's not right, so I'm going to drop in, get a girl from uni to slot into the seat just for this morning. Otherwise, it's going to get worse and worse. He doesn't know it yet, so I'll tell Darcy, just we'll go in. At least we, we'll keep the whole crew rowing. OK, and she's of a reasonable standard, so... All right. Won't be the same, but anyway. With only one month before Head of the River, John Bowes acknowledges that for every precious moment on the water to be effective in the crew's improvement, he needs eight healthy rowers. This morning, much to his irritation, he only has seven. Thanks for doing this, Kirsty. This is what happens. I could have had a rower here this morning, Harley Moore, to fill in for you, but because of your knuckleheadness, no. The whole crew, the whole session, and Saturday's preparation suffers. Get in here. Goodness me. Thanks, Sponge. Let's just continue on. You might have to adjust those feet. Mate, I asked you yesterday. No, you couldn't even do it. You couldn't even, I should have made the call at the gym. You couldn't even sit properly to do yoga. And I spoke to you about trust. They might as well throw it out the window. Uh, I think it's like, it's fair. I, 
you know, I should have thought on like a lot deeper level to what Bozy was thinking on at the time. And, you know, instead of being selfish and thinking that I could push through it, the crew would have been better off with another rower in, in the first place. That could you know, replicate the way I row and then make it a lot easier for the crew to race on the weekend, not have a, a weak unit in one training session. So rather than getting it right, we're all put back. Never seen you row so badly because you can't, you can't sit. If you can't sit down on a seat, you can't row. The whole reason we're training on the river is to perfect the actual rowing stroke. You have to think about how the boat runs underneath you and how any movement of yours could potentially slow down the boat. We'll paddle up past the rocks where we start our first piece. That's good, Kirst, doing a good job. Just swing along. Every time we train on the river, it's not necessarily to physically end ourselves, it's to further develop our technique. Soft knees into the front. Be patient, finish the stroke off. It's just the pause. If we can make our stroke as efficient as possible, it really helps us uh, travel fast. That's a minute down, 30 seconds. Oh, but that's really pushing along nicely. Making sure we're finishing off the stroke. The travel back to the bodies, there. Observing from an arm's length is a nudgy old boy who has certainly not lost his taste or love for the water. At the moment I'm co-coaching with John and sort of learning off him and then being able to take that down in future years to um, the younger, younger boys and then build them up to be ready for the first date. And um, my other role is just coaching um, Darcy really and trying to make him the best cox that he can be so that uh, the crew can really work hard off him and he can push them to new limits. Two boys, length and rhythm. Length and rhythm. It's a strange irony that the youngest voice in the boat is also the loudest. 139. And let's keep it under 140. All right, let's get ready to go. 45 seconds on. If the ride out is about precision and rhythm, then the journey back is all power and strength. Catch, I want the quick catches. There, there, there. I want that blade in too. All right, boys, we're going up two points. Up two points. Sit back. Sit back. All right, this one, we're going to kill it. That session went really well. There was a lot of pressure there when we needed it. And I felt like we've definitely improved on a lot of things, like our catches were going in then. Today we're really trying to work on really getting some um, power through the boat, because we've got to be really quick out of the start when we go down to Sydney. No, it doesn't. Just make sure they're in pairs. And in the After two wins in lead up GPS regattas, the eight are travelling to Sydney for the New South Wales state titles. This weekend I'm really looking forward to um, racing some bigger crews, um, some really large competition, um, going down there and really trying to do our best. It should be a really good opportunity for everyone. However, a minor medical condition may force a change in personnel. So be it, if you can't row, you can't row, we've got to get yeah. it right, OK? Yeah, OK. But uh, just let you know, but definitely with us on Thursday, I'll, I'll let Hawkey know, yeah. OK? How are we going, boys? Close? Are the tools out of the boat? Take them out. There were tools in there. A spanner and an alico. In there. In there. No. I'm just saying, lucky I'm here. Did you get these out? Where are you going? Yeah. Yeah. You ready? You ready? You ready? <laughs> Someone took them out. Someone took them out. Good, that's easy. At least we know, okay? Wash up from this morning, guys. Come in, come in, let's form the circle. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Uh, my honest opinion is I don't think Sam will be with us on the weekend. Uh, after he goes to the doctors today. And I think that by you putting that off, I reckon that was in the back of your mind. That's why you didn't want to go last night. Okay, thanks for your effort this morning. Don't forget, we've got yoga this afternoon. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. All right, Sam. Thanks, buddy. Let's go, boys, let's go.
to see this boat represent uh, the sport in these hallowed halls uh, where there have been some incredible achievements fills me with immense pride, uh, especially from you know, its early beginnings. Uh, this particular boat uh, was actually originally going to be the very first first eight boat in 2002. Much like Nudgy's early start, it was a rocky one. The boys in their very first row uh, rode it up onto the dam wall at, at Lake Kuangba and ripped a big hole in the boat. What marks this boat very special, however, not just being the very first boat we were able to purchase, was the fact that it was named after Graham Leddy, who is arguably the, the founder of, of Nudgy Rowing. Two boys that, that really deserve uh, special attention in the 2003 crew uh, was two-seat uh, Tom O'Shea, and uh, in the coxswain seat, Scott Turvey. Uh, both boys, it was their very first season of rowing uh, leading into the 2003 season. Uh, both boys had never sat in a boat before, which is a tremendous achievement for them to go on and win uh, Nudgy's maiden uh, title. The boys uh, can be seen here in the photo of the 2003 crew holding aloft uh, the iconic uh, Iconic Cup. Uh, it's an absolute uh, icon of GPS sport. It's the only trophy that has every boy's name on it that has won uh, the Heather River since 1918. Probably an important note uh, is really the foundational start of Nudgee rowing, which occurred in, in the late 90s. 97 and 98, we tried to start rowing. There were some fathers that, that got together with a new teacher. The brothers felt that rowing wasn't quite the sport that was representative of, of their community. It was seen as very elitist, expensive sport. But interestingly enough, it was actually the mums when the sport was cancelled in those early years, in 97. It was the mums that got together and did a petition. They were in the car park asking other mums to sign on uh, to support the boys in allowing this sport to, uh, to be you know, available to all boys at Nudgee. And as we've seen over many issues and many uh, eras, the Nudgee mums won in the end and the sport was, was reclaimed as a sport here at, at the school. After two comfortable wins in the last two regattas, a decision has been made to travel to Penrith. It just gives us that benefit of a bit of harder racing. Not necessarily that the GPS system doesn't have that because everyone here is up to the same standard as we are, but it just adds a bit more excitement sometimes for the boys as well. If we are going to aim for a national title or anything like that, it just gives us a bit of an indication where we are at. What do you have to weigh? 50. So you reckon you got the race plan all sorted? Yeah, I, I still have it. Yeah. And make sure you have a talk to the boys about when you want to say what you want, how you want the boat to feel when you call it, that you want the rate to sort of step up a little bit. We've just taken Darcy over to weigh in because um, just regulation that all the cocks have to be 55 kilos or above. So he had to take over a bit of weight with him just because he's a bit, he's a bit, a bit lighter. So um, he's 0.4 up. So. Um, He's done a very good job there to sort of manage the weight. What were you? On the dock. Um, on the dock. Point four. Point four. Lovely. Oh, well, obviously the weight can slow a boat down, especially because the cox is, he's not like pulling. The heavier you are, the more sort of you're putting on the boys to sort of pull. Okay, boys, I'm going off the, off the air. Quick catches. Is that your call? Quick yeah. catches. Do it twice. Quick catches. Pound the rock with quick catches. Okay, think about it. Don't complicate it. Relax, Stars. Yeah, You're here to enjoy yourself. I will. Zane, how much you pay for those shoes? How much you pay for those shoes? Down south, especially in places like Sydney and more importantly Melbourne this year, you're always going to have crews that are a lot older than us as Queensland crews because of the different system. You're not sitting there remembering that. You want to do as well as you can because you're comparing yourself to them as equals and then it helps your mental more so than anything. Uh, three minutes or so, fellas, and we'll just come over here with a bit of a chat. How are we feeling, boys? Nervous. Nervous? Dogs are barking. The dogs? Hopefully they're howling. OK, fellas, Sunday to Friday, is when I shine. Regatta day is when you shine. All right, so this is your day. The big thing today, it's a heat. So let's just be aware of that. It's something new that we're not used to doing. We're used to going hard right to the line. If, and I think we're gonna go okay in the heat, if we get to the 1250, the 1500, we're racing to the 1250. 
full race rehearsal. And enjoy it, fellas. We came down here to enjoy this. Okay, so far, it's, just, it's been terrific. Remember what we spoke about last night, Jay? We made that commitment. That's what we're doing today, okay? One job. Let's get it. Suffers. Go. 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 On the way up, that's when I'm most nervous. Rowing up, I'm playing the race through in my head. What I need to do, the ideal result, and playing it through for the perfect race. OK, now let's, let's Darcy run the boat. Focus in here. If I'm thinking about the perfect race, that's all that matters. All right, power power road off. Ooh. I don't seem to be as enthusiastic, I seem to be a bit dead. Leading up to the start, it's all about accepting the way you feel. You accept the nerves, what they are. And the second thing is, you think about one thing, and that's um, the first stroke. You're not thinking about the last one, you're not thinking about what you're going to be doing in the middle of the race. You're thinking about how you're going to attack the first stroke of the race. In those moments, maybe just say a few key words to the boys about what I'm looking for in that race. And just trying to keep it focused on being ready and then getting them Focus mentally. Where are mate? Roll call. Cool. They shot out, haven't they? You guys are so laborious. I don't know why we're so slow out of the start. All right, boys, let's really lengthen out. Let's go long now. Long now. That's it. Keep that finish going. Off the start, we had to be right into racing mode. In the heat in New South Wales, we got dropped out of the start and we had to really work our way back throughout the rest of the race. The competition's bloody hot. We've got some work to do. On the legs. On the legs. Last few strokes, let's go up. Now. Yeah. Right. Nudgy crosses the line in third place, with Victoria's Brighton Grammar coming in first. I wonder what the previous one did. We had to stay and watch what Scotch do. The result is a timely reminder that Queensland is just one state in a country of schoolboy rowers, and both Brighton and Melbourne Scotch College will be formidable opponents in the final. Barge in, barge in. How was the, uh, well, talk me through it. When we're usually racing and you, you get the catch in and it's really, where well, that just felt like it was just like, just like up and down. How'd you find it, Ethan? First time of the big time? I thought the start was probably better than usual. It's just that 1K when Darcy went silent, I really felt like the difference of slug, like it got really heavy. And then when I came back on, I said to Ethan, oh, let's go up two points. And you could feel it, like we actually started, like that's when it started moving properly, like how we used to it moving. And that's when we started getting lengths and seats on people. So the ball's very much in your court. You can't be at this level and at the thousand metres, which you did, give them you know, a length's lead. Technically you look okay. It just didn't have that boom, bang, we everyone else is here to race. We're here for dressage. It looked like that. Oh, a little bit disappointing for us. Uh, the good part is uh, our, to our time wasn't too bad. The fact we got in the final, it just didn't have the get up and go that we normally have. And that might be because they're not used to having such tough competition. Uh, where in Queensland, it's, you know, they're out in front pretty quickly and they can dictate the terms of the race. Uh, here they can't dictate the terms of the race, so you know, that's, that's, they're out of their comfort zone, which is good, that's what we came down here for, so they get used to responding to that and making decisions and choices under pressure. There's little time for reflection or commiseration, as an hour later, they re-enter the water for what is effectively a preemptive rehearsal for the national final in a few months' time. Come on, that first K. First K, so important. Out of the start. This is going to be interesting, this one. Whether they uh, really accept the challenge. To an outsider, any rowing event can be a heady experience. When there's more bikes than boats, you know you've stumbled across a unique sport. The main riders on the other side on the bikes. Okay, yeah. 
are coming down. If it wasn't the, the eights, then they'd be still back there waiting. So who have they got here? They've got Scots who are fairly strong. Did you, did you see the first heat? Coaches, colleagues and supporters can cycle alongside the action, while some opt for grass underfoot. And on the left, from where we're looking, so where's Ben sitting? Is he fourth? From the base? Oh, is he? Come on, boys. They're doing well. They're, it looks good. Oh, it's a lot of effort. I cry. But just the hours. Go, Dungey! Great work, Dungey! Come on, boys. Pick it up. Let's go, Dungey! Come on, Dungey! The Nudgy crew attack hard from the start, trying to rattle the two Victorian crews. Okay, so what have we got? Third? Take it home, Nudgey! It's a bold strategy, but Scotch College have other ideas. But here we've got, come on, Nudgy. Go, Nudgy, left! Oh, they're, they're right there. Come on, Nudgy. Excellent. Third. Thank God for that. That's good. It's very good. Oh, fantastic. They, mate, we led the first thousand. So they had a crack. They did exactly what, what we asked. And, mate, to be fair, I reckon we're getting a bit of a head breeze over there, more so than the others. No, we're, mate, well, it's back on. It looks like it's back on now. The only thing is, if, if Scotch go over, I can't see us, buddy, getting near them, mate. And I just reckon they just ran out of go buttons by the end. It just got too hard. Mate, you asked them to really have a crack, and they did. We wanted to remain consistent. We wanted to remain unbeaten in Queensland. You know, that was constantly on our minds. And then when we, when we went down to New South Wales, it was always, you know, how close can we get to them or can we beat them? Good job, Russ. Good job, boys. Feel a bit better? Good job, Russ. Good work, fellas. Darcy, Will Cox. Racing against guys and sitting, being able to sit beside guys who are going to give it just as much as you are, literally right across the course, as opposed to being in Brisbane, where you might only get one or two crews that are actually going to give you a go. There's no denying that Scotch College are a force to be reckoned with, although not everything about their dominant performance is perfect. Some pretty ordinary haircuts in that boat, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how's your study going? Yeah, all right. I'm just checking off that checklist we got given. Oh, but it's pretty good how we get, we're given it, so a bit of direction. It saves me from last term. Yeah. <laughs> We train upwards of 16 hours a week and we need our sleep to be able to do those hours of training. So it's pretty important you're organised. Really you just have to make the most of your time. Make sure that all the work that you're doing is productive work and work that should be getting done. But as soon as I came into the rowing season, I just didn't have that time to waste. It was a bit of a, I had to adapt at the start, but after I got past that kind of phase, then it was pretty easy. Then just work through an order. Oh yeah, yeah, so substitution where you, yeah. Yeah, because Kozak substitutes yeah. into. Yeah, so we'll do that one. Let you equal sine x. No, you should equal cos 5x. Because you find the derivative. For me it's really, I have to keep busy. I have to be doing exercise and everything. Otherwise I can't work, I can't work well. I think exercise is really important to remain focused in the classroom and like at home. So I, I like to remain pretty active. That's, that's not it, it can't be it. Why not? I'm pretty sure it's negative sine x cos 5x. What? Rowing's really translatable in real life situations because you really have to be so dedicated to that one goal. We're, we've got a big focus on carrying the themes over from our training program into the real life. So we'll take everything that we've learnt there and we'll put it to use in school or our social lives. Next year, my ambition would be um, to study biomed. So in the years to come, I can um, go into a doctorate of medicine. Rowing would kind of set me up perfectly. The organisation you'll have to have when you're studying after school and like working around your life. Yeah, 
This morning's session carries more weight in terms of performance and impression, as the first eight crew are joined by Principal Peter Fulliger. A couple of times a season I like to come out with the boys and get in the boat either with the first eight or with one of the other junior crews. It's a real pleasure for me to, to sit there and admire what they commit to, to their rowing, to enjoy the natural environment of course and just to be part of, of, of something that's a really important part of Nudgy life. Paddy, make sure handle flat all the way through. Let's go for 10 strokes. Nah. Well, I've got a lot of confidence in John as a coach. He's, uh, He's a master coach uh, in rowing and I admire what he's done for Nudgee over a long period of time. He's got, assembled a very, very strong crew, strong, talented rowers, but also some really good quality young men uh, who are coming together very promisingly, I guess, as a crew for this year. That's a great feeling. Ethan, it just felt like we couldn't get it coming off the back without it tipping to one side. It was, it was very fragile coming off the finish. Darcy? Is Leighton awake or not? Leighton, are you awake? Hey, mate. Sammy, doing a great job in the middle there, mate. Really good. On its good days, it's perfect. On its bad days, oh, it's something else. So many great memories of just rowing on perfect water. There's been mornings where we've had to have the coaches' coffee cups to empty out the water before we sunk. As I come from Rocky, we have quite flat surfaces all the time. However, with multiple tinnies on the water at once around you, the Brisbane River is quite rough. It's not an easy environment to train in. Current is very strong. It's used by many schools and clubs, so the sort of speedboat washes, it's like training on a, on a football field for us. Our football field is, is the river. Good work, boys. How's that? Good session? Hey? It wasn't our first. Was it? I thought coming past, yeah. apart from this, buddy, apart from this yeah. water, what did you think? Were they getting good speeds? Or? Yeah, oh, except for that, that well, after we stopped and then we... Oh, from the bridge back? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's just really hard. I can't see rowing in the way that, that, that James or, or John can in a technical way. I don't have that knowledge, I really don't. What I can you know, admire is, is what you do commit to rowing and what I see collectively in the boat, which is, you know, there's a concentration and an intensity there, you know, a controlled intensity there today, which I really admire. And I know there's a lot of talent in the boat. There's some challenges still ahead. Th thanks for having me out, so I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. So thanks, boys. Well done. Ben, Thank good you. job, mate. Boys this morning. Pat, well done, mate. Dylan, well done, mate. Dylan, by two, well done. Zane, good job. Sammy, well done. Well done, Leighton. Good job. Enjoy that this morning. Mate, hardest I've seen you row, Sambo. Hey? <laughs> Not you. Not me. Oh, get out of it. While the rowing shed downstairs runs like clockwork, the same can be said for upstairs, where the engines are fuelled almost entirely by volunteers. Morning, how are you? Sausages and bacon? Oh, no sausage, thanks. Yeah, I've got some more bacon. Uh, are you sure? Yeah. Morning, Ethan, how are you? Good, thanks, how are you? Very well. So we come and prepare breakfast for the boys. So they start with some chocolate milk. And then this morning we've prepared them fried eggs, sausages, bacon, fruit salad, and then they have yogurt and cereal. But each morning the menus change so that they have a mixture because a lot of the crews will be here and they will train every day. So it's nice for them to have a bit of a change. Come on, Gussie, come on, hurry up. Morning, Stuart. Good, how are you? Morning, how are you? Yeah, well, yourself? Very well. Do you want the bacon on your bread? Yes, please. I like to think that we're a family here at the rowing sheds, and it's like the boys being on the water. It takes every boy to make that boat move. It takes every parent to make the shed function. And we just work so well together. The camaraderie is amazing down here, and, and, and it's needed. And, and to make our shed very successful, we need those parents behind us. And I think you come down and you feel that community, you feel that family, and you don't want to leave, so you, you stay and, and help out. Pat, do you want some more sausages? The shed empties promptly as parents and students ready themselves for a day of work and school. It's 7.30 a.m., and the rest of the world is only just waking up.
I think Wire Along Dam's a beautiful place. It has that beauty of um, the countryside and also obviously the water, but in the challenges that come, uh, the isolation, it's a very um, you know, labour extensive um, operation, so we need a lot of hands on deck to, to make sure that all the boats are there. We're, we're feeding the boys, they have the shade from tents, etc., that are required. Wyralong's different. It's very hilly and there is not the opportunity for many spectators. You're not going down the side hearing your coach screaming at you on his bike. You can't hear anything else except your cox and the screaming of all the other coxes. Lake Wyaralong will host today's penultimate GPS meet before the head of the river in two weeks' time. The dam that aligns the bottom of the course frames a unique, surreal setting for Brisbane's rowing community who will train on the river but compete at the lake. Okay, when you're ready. All right, split. All right, down to the water. All right, you four, Jared, Alex, Josh, line up. Walk out and straight. In an effort to prepare each school for the season's main regatta, a series of pre-GPS meets are scheduled for the lake. Success at these events is all relative, but the 2019 Nudgee College First Eight are so far unbeaten in each of them and under increasing pressure to maintain their hot run of form. Good morning, gentlemen. You've got two races today. You've got one next week. The following week, you've got one race for Head of the River. This is an audition. This is practice. We've had a lot of sickness in the shed this week. A little bit like last week with the weather, You've got to make the most of and see everything as an opportunity. If you're being moved up to a crew, see it as an opportunity. If you've got a new guy in the crew, see it as an opportunity to go even better with someone that's coming up from another crew. It's really important that you look at yourself and take responsibility for your own performance today, okay? Don't get off the water and blame someone else. Listen to your cox, obey his commands and do what you know you need to do. Work on what your coach has been talking you to work on. Have a good race, do your best. I want to be a Nudgy Rock! I want to be a Nudgy Rock! I want to live a life of danger! I want to live a life of danger! Run, 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 run! run. 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 Win and win! Win and win! I know a team I love the best! I know a team I love the best! Beat them standing! Beat, beat them standing! Beat them live! Beat them live! They have wings! They have wings! We beat them fly! We beat them fly! One, two, three, four! One, two, three, four! One, two, three, four! One, two, three, four. The individual tasked with facilitating Nudgee's top-end dominance while continuing to nurture and develop new talent across the whole shed is James Burton, Nudgee's new director of rowing. Uh, let's just watch the crew though, try not to watch the race but actually watch the boat's going to move. Look mate, they're only, they're almost touching Churchy Stern, you know, like it's not, I need to talk to him. It looks really good mate. But. No, no, no buts. It looks really good. 7.50 to go, they're completely out of the race. So they're, they're rowing on their own. Yeah. So there's no intensity and they're yeah. still rowing really well. Just remember, as soon as they're half a length down, that they don't know where they are yeah. anymore. Burton's advice and feedback is not limited to the students, as he guides the coaching staff to a better performance each week. Mate, yeah. you saw how hard they're rowing there. Yeah, That's amazing. Well done. Oh, thanks, Jimmy. Oh, and, and mate, the rowing. Yeah, no, that looked a lot Good. better than it, than it has been, so I'm pretty happy with that. You've got six sessions left. That is the best I've ever seen them row. So what we're going to work on next week is getting you guys up into that field and you watch how quickly you can stay with it then, okay? But we're not going to drop our bundle because of a margin. Of course, not everything is technical. With competitive personalities operating in close proximity, there will be speed bumps along the way. I bet you you take off 20 seconds from that margin today. Okay? okay? Now, I understand we've got different personalities. You don't have to like everyone in the crew, but we need to respect each other in the way that we talk to them, and that goes both ways, okay? Put in 100%. Do your job, your job. That bike does his job, Lyndon does his job and you will be amazed at what we can do in 14 days. Just trust me. You with me? Yes. Come on. 
You with me? Yes, sir. Okay. Don't want to talk too much, uh, boys. I just want to say a couple of things. The fact that you've had three really tough races that the other other guys haven't, you know, when we're away. All this week and the week before has been great, and you guys have been great. Keep to the plan. Don't complicate it. Okay, keep it simple. Just 10 strokes at a time. 10 strokes, 10 perfect strokes, and then we go again. Then go back again for another 10 strokes. Nudgee's success so far in 2019 is testament to planning, preparation and execution. But the undefeated run is also a psychological burden to bear, with TSS and Churchy starting to slowly reduce the winning margins over the last few weeks. Driving it back to the finish, that's 128 there. Let's drive it back now. Snap the legs. Snap the legs. That's it, boys, we're moving now. We're coming up to the 1K. I'm going to go off the mic, let's start to pound the rock. I want those blades going in. And let's get that long drive now. Last 500, let's own it. Yeah, that's it, locking that blade in now. Quick catches now. Accelerate there. Yeah, that's it, boys, really drive it back to the finish. Driving there. 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 All right, boys, we're pushing away from TSS. Let's push away now. Last few strokes, let's go up now. Bro, light. All right, easy there, easy there. I'm just tapping it on short side. All right, three cheers for the other crews. In go away. Yeah. In go away. Yeah. In go away. Yeah. We went out there and we did our best. We achieved the result we wanted and um, we're working towards the head of river. Um, <sighs> Jay's home nervous for it. A uh, big day. I've got feelings coming back up from last year. Everything we went through, thought process. I know Bozy says not to think about the result, but here we are today thinking about the result once again. It's just something we do. There's nothing about it we can stop, but we've just got to trust the process. on this one, this is Tom is it? Tom then Dan. Five minutes boys, five minutes! Just do like a 20 second gone and then just go into memory and make sure it recorded. What are you going for? This is our last 30 minute ergo. Mentally I think this is really tough. It requires those micro goals that we speak about. It requires you to really dare this afternoon. It's daunting, I hate it. 
it's one of the worst feelings just going in there, knowing you have to do this session, having it all written up on the board. It's just not fun at all. Through the nose and out through the nose. You know what's required. Scared at times, like you're there by yourself, just looking at a screen for up to 30 minutes at a time. You know exactly what you're going to do, you know how many Ks you're going to be doing it, and you get told what split you're going to do. You just kind of have to just put that aside and just go look at it and say, okay, I have to sit on this for as long as I can. Okay, let's plug in 30 minutes. Fellas, don't make it more than what it is. At the end of the day, all it is is an ergo. Okay, feet in, screen's ready, go. Get on your target straight away. On your target. Good work, boys, good work. Come on, Benny, come on. Get back up the eight sixes. Good work, Sambo. That's it. That's away, Dylan Rose. Good work. Come on, Benny, don't let it slip away. This is where you attack each minute. That's it, Dylan, keep it up, Pete. Keep it up, Pete. And drive it. Drive the legs near. Great work, buddy. Great work, champion. Dylan, you're killing it. That's it, Sambo. Come on, Sammy, come on. Eight six is not Leighton, come on, it's there. Come on, Sammy, let's see how tough you are. Come on, Paddy, drive it home. Then we get the 50, up two points. Pushing the body up to and beyond its threshold is a prerequisite for rowing. The battle starts in the mind. And today there is a positive mental mindset across the Opens program with numerous PBs and performance goals achieved. Ethan. Eight, five, zero, eight. Ethan Ferrero from the clouds. Hey, what have you been doing for the last six months? Re relying on everyone else to pull your lazy, buddy. Well done, mate. Hey, there's someone who's sick. Jacko. Jacko PB. 7757. Seven, seven. Oh, Will. 8,003. Well, I don't believe it. Champion. Hey, Hawkey. Good, mate. Oh, your crew is on bloody fire. Yeah, Dan Webb, PB, Tom Enders, Will. Will got up above eight. I think Tom got an eight, two, two, and then Dan got also got that, eight, two, two. So, yeah, just wanted to let you know that your crew's on fire, mate. That's all right. All right, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Check the computer, Cal, to see what was your first 30 minute one in term four. Have you got it there? His best is 8447. That's for Sam. Sam 8447, yeah. So, Sam, what's the PB? Yeah. 7687. Where's your best? It was my part last best. Yep. In a plethora of personal bests, seven seed Ben McMillan has fallen short of his best. Yours is your best. off. I think you're just trying to do too much rate rather than a bit more. Yeah, I wasn't composed. No. So how come you collapsing at the finish then? I think it's just a mental thing. Okay. Is it similar to what we're talking about in the boat? In the skull. In the eight. In the eight, I'm fine. Yeah, okay. Zane. I want you to sleep in tomorrow. But for three seat Zane Kirk, the physical hurdle has proven too great. So you'll be in one race and he'll be in the other one, okay? So you'll probably do the first race. Yeah, right? okay. Okay. Yeah. He's, just, he's not ready, but certainly tomorrow morning. You can ride both sides, can't you? Yeah. Okay. That's it, Dan. Well done, mate. Yeah, thank you. Today's effort is indicative of an open program ready to challenge the best of the GPS. You did a great job today. You <laughs> cheeky bastard. Nudgee College only started rowing in the Queensland GPS in 1998 and over the last 20 years have become a force on the water, winning consistently in both the first eight and overall point score categories. So our first Head of the River season officially with the first eight was 2002. We were getting a bus to the Brisbane River in which we were literally leaving our gear on the side of the river. We would come back from rowing 
and most weeks a portion of the boys' gear had been stolen. We were in borrowed boats. Schools like Brisbane Grammar School and State High School, they sort of gave us their old boats. They were looking to have more schools rowed. There was a belief that if GPS did not have six schools doing a sport, then the principals might cancel that sport. On Head of the River Day in 2003, no one was really taking Nudgee seriously. Uh, the boys went out hard from the start with BBC, who were leading at halfway, and just that determined, hard crew pegged them back, uh, winning by half a second. There was absolutely a feeling of, oh no, the Nudgee giant has awoken. Now those guys who have always been good at sport are good at rowing as well. And in 2019, Nudgee's top-end rowing crews are on their way to repeating that success. The first day, I think they're looking very sharp. They're, uh, I think they're really excited about the opportunity to get out there tomorrow. For our open rowers, it's a culmination of four or five years of training and um, the chance to perform in front of a lot of people. And um, even the boys that go on with rowing, they'll go to world championships and there won't be this many supporters there. So it's quite an event. And I suppose for the school, it's, you know, it's a great showcase of their, their hard work and they get to show their peers, their supporters, what they've done to prepare for the day. There's two cups to win tomorrow. One's the Old Boys Cup, which is the rowing championship for the best rowing shed on the day. And the second cup is the O'Connor Cup, which is given to the winning first aid crew. Grandma, so Grandma, Grandma. Grandma. Well, yeah. oh, I put in the thing for my honour pocket as well. Yeah, good. For my honour pocket. When do we have to pay for that? Yeah, it gets accepted like after the river. I don't read bow or anything. No, no, Just no, read yeah, the yeah. list of names. Yeah. All right. So, but don't forget, you got to go backwards. The second eight next to them, and then the first eight come in front. Yeah. Is that all right? He's doing nines. Ten. Eleven. You're doing tens. Eleven. Eleven. And I'll do open thirds yeah. and seconds. But in rowing, you need everyone listening to the cocks at the same time. And when you don't do this, the team finds out straight away. People ask me how all the boys performed this weekend. And my answer is, I don't really know. Nudgee's been very successful at rowing over the last five years. But when I'm answering them, there's one thing I do know. I do know that these boys at Nudgee Rowing are resilient. In some sports, you can have a star and they can shine brightly and they can dominate to get the team to win. But in rowing, you need everyone pulling at the same time. I now invite John Bowes to come forward to represent the first date. Good morning, uh, Mr. Fulliger, staff, parents, and men of Nudgee. The uh, first date for 2019 is Leighton Frederick. Two seat is Dylan Dunn. Three seat, Zane Kirk. Four seat, Sam Green. Five seat, Dylan Rhodes. Six seat, and captain of boats, Pat Long. Seven seat, Ben McMillan. Stroking the eight is Ethan Ferrero. And steering the eight is Darcy Carmody. The uh, open first eight for 2019. The eight boys that were just presented to you and all the other boys presented today, our season all comes down to this Saturday. They've made sacrifices to be ready to compete this weekend, to be at their best for one six minute race. This Saturday, it's going to take every crew from year 10 to the Opens to step up more than they ever have before. Not for themselves, but for the shed and for this school. Nudgy Rowing needs you. Every crew from the Open First State to the U10 Six Quad needs you, you and the support of the 10,000 brothers this weekend to get us all across that line and make it a special day for Nudgy. So I'll be at the dinner on Friday. For dinner? Aren't you going to be? We're having dinner at yeah. your house, I suppose. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to then. Yeah. No. Yeah, what did you try dinner? Yeah, Pa, come over now. Right. One sec. You too. Hey, good on you. One sec. The Pat Long fan club is strong, loyal, and quite demanding. Awesome, we've won one sec. Wait, wait, can we just... Oh my God, hurry up. Oh my God. Okay, okay, say cheers, Pat. One, two, three. See you, Grandma, see if I'm gonna go. My zooty's not long enough. 
You still look short, Ethan. It's okay. Yeah, bro. Where are we looking? So look, no, don't don't look at a camera. Just look at look in open space. The ritual of the rowing assembly includes a presentation of the famous first date blue and white zoot suit, which comes with the mandatory fitting session. Are we? I don't know. Zooties with undies. Come on, come on, mate. Come on, little boy. It's actually like what comes that? Of course, alterations are required. With the physical state already in peak condition, the psychological readiness must also be tapered in to avoid nervous energy turning into tomfoolery. This week generally, and I can already feel it in the room, there is high nervous energy in the room. Training volume drops off, anxiety, apprehension builds. Lots of pressure this week. You might be finding it difficult to sleep not only because you're training less, but because there's lots of pressure that you need to deal with. Throughout the week, keep returning to those things that you can control. You can't control the weather, you can't control your opponents. You can control what you eat this week, how much water you drink, your recovery. Scan the hips, your glutes. See if you can relax any muscular tension. Just become aware of this gentle ebb and flow in your belly. Relax any anxiety that you might be holding in your chest, across the tops of the shoulders. If you feel like you're holding on to anything in your mind that might be blocking you from being present to this experience, take three open mouth exhales. Just allow yourself to shift into knowing and trusting that everything you need is right here. And this ocean breath is a good one to use this week when you notice yourself detouring into that dark place of worry. The biggest day in the rowing calendar is finally here. and the lake is awash with determined crews, all looking for a victory of their own. We had been at the front for so long, so we had a lot to lose. Every other crew went for us. We knew there was a lot on the line, and it was always going to be a hard race with TSS, Terrace and Churchy, but we just had to do what we've been doing the rest of the season. Feeling nervous now? Oh, mate, I'm nervous for bloody all week. No, normally I'm not. Roll towards course, two, one. Hold it up, boys, hold it up. Happy with your water bottles? This is it. How are the dogs? Barking? Barking. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's very easy for me to say, fellas, keep it normal, and it's not a normal day. I'll, I'll just say one thing, and that's you've heard me say it before, of every crew that's rowed the head of the river, when you talk to them after it, they all say the same thing. If you guys who've rowed it last year, it was so fast. Before I knew it, it was over and done with. Let's make sure that we're ready for it, OK? Try and stay in the here and now, OK? Each stroke. Now, from yesterday, we know we don't have to spin the wheels, but we don't want to get left behind, all right? Trust yourself coming out of the start. Today, the whips will be cracking out of the start. Let's make sure we're ready. You're so fit. You've got so much there. And regardless of what happens, I'm very proud to have coached you guys, seriously. But I just want you guys to have your best row. Face up to it and go for it. I've lost and won a lot of races in the GPS, but any race, it's exciting. And win or lose, there's just so much emotion that goes through every race. And that's why there's so much preparation. And every boat you're in, doesn't matter if you're in the first, you're going through a lot of the same things. For seven of the starting eight, this will be the last time they row on the lake together. Only Cox Darcy Carmody and seven-seat Ben McMillan will return. But first, the second eight will have a grudge race to settle. It's all good. Well, I'm nervous now for the seconds. 
Having shared the spoils with Churchy over the previous four races, today's winner will not only settle the second eight head of the river title, but rightly claim best crew for the season. Come on, Ethan. The weather has closed in. With low visibility and the persistent rain, the lake has lost its glass-like surface and is now a rough, jagged veneer. There! There! Good! Last 500? I want to own it! It makes for a tough row, but there's no time for excuses. Each crew must battle the conditions, and Nudgee pulls out to a small but significant lead. Come on! Come on! Yes! Lock the legs, last, last few strokes. Let's go for our last 10, and we're going up now. Yes! Go! 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 Yes! Snap there! Snap there! The line's there, we're pushing! you win a piece of cloth or you know a piece of felt with a screen print on it saying you won and and actually at the head of the river you win nothing but you you live with the knowledge that you won the head of the river that carries a lot of weight oh it was honestly a dream come true having done two seasons and having them not be the perfect season that I grew up, I guess, in the rowing community watching. I couldn't have asked for anything better with a better group of boys. Like, it was something amazing and something that I will honestly cherish forever. And the final act is an unconventional last row. Nice cup of one, <laughs> Last row up here together. Yeah, absolutely. Never be like that again, so. So were they in front of the thousand? Yeah, yeah, they were in front after 50 metres. One. Just kept going. But yeah, I thought they'd go on go with on. more, uh, but I don't care. Yeah, they were so nervous beforehand. Yeah. I, got, I don't know, mate, I'm waiting there for here. So it should have been an okay time. It was pouring rain, of course, too. Pretty Did you get a time at all? Did they give a time at all? Uh, I didn't hear it. No. Any. The second trophy, uh, Connor Cup, is awarded to the winning crew of the first eight race. In second place, Gregory Terrace, and the winning crew in 2019, Nucky College.
was so many emotions, I can't explain. My heart was pounding all the way down the course and then just to see them come across that line was just, after all their hard work that they've been doing since September, it was just fantastic. You know, they have worked so hard and a lot of those boys, it's their fifth season. So, you know, that this has been since they started in year nine all the way through to this moment and making that crew and then getting that, that cup in their hand. This is what they've worked for. The euphoria of winning the final two races provides inspiration to the rest of the Nudgy rowing program. And while there is much work to do in the off-season, today's victory needs to be celebrated. Come on, a bit more, a bit more. Get uh, down, up. You know, you're just doing the little you know, kangaroo hops. Good work, Sammy. That's it. That's better. Just take your time. It's, it's not a rush for this. What's that, two, Pat? Yeah. That's at the 500. As a coach, I find working with super motivated kids to achieve, uh, to achieve what they want in life you know, very inspirational. I love being part of their development. So how, how far to go? Sam, Sammy? Well, we just so, finished. So you, this way. Look at everyone else got their legs down. Nice hang, 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 hang. I'm a coach that I'm there for the kids. Uh, it really is, and I've developed this over the years. I'm there for their journey. It's not my journey. I've had my, uh, my go, and I hope I bring skills along, not only in the boat, but on and off the water. That's good effort today. And when we get back in, we'll de-rig and put the boat in the sock, ready to go, OK? Well done today, mate. That's good. You're getting better all the time. Make sure you ice that, OK? Yeah. The respect that he has for all of his rowers is second to none. He's out there every day after rowing, before rowing, just trying to nut out everything that he can make that boat better. He is an absolute genius, really. So I know we're tired. You know, we get the rest of the day after today is fairly easy. It's an easier day apart from Thursday afternoon. Grade 10 was when I first really got picked up on his radar. From then, I always knew I just wanted him to know my name. You could ask my parents as well. The only goal I had for my rowing seasons and career was just for Bozy to know my name. He was a man I always looked up to, and despite some of it being the most awful experience with the amount of physical training we went through, it was brilliant to have him as a mentor and a coach. And you will row your heart out and do whatever it takes, because he would do the same for you. It comes from your behaviour. I hope I'm that sort of coach that they look back on and say, yeah, he was a, he was a demanding coach, but he's also, he taught me good life skills, and he's a good bloke, and you know, we've got a good relationship. If you don't win the relationship game, I can't see the point in coaching. Mate, hey, you're fatter than Harry and me. Uh -huh. Hey? Buddy, I've lost four kilos in my... Like... Yeah, that's because you're, buddy, 14 kilos over bloody weight. The kids at Nudgy are absolutely wonderful kids and I'm in a very fortunate position and I'm very grateful and I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. Day in, day out, you know, they, we pound, whether, we pound, whether we pound the rock... Oh, hang on, mate. Michael Hawke. About to fly out down to the Sydney to the Sydney International Regatta Centre. Pretty bloody nervous to go down and compete against the nation's best rowers, bloody dogs barking. Scotch and Brighton, pretty good competition versus them at New South Wales State. Should be good to race them again. Really excited to go down and compete for the team, for the school. The two Victorian schools who got the better of the blue and white a month earlier are here, and so is the wind, a factor which affects every crew, but is likely to challenge the lighter boats. It is this morning's topic of conversation. Mate, that's, that's been around our head breeze. Yeah, look, it's a direct head. There's a flag there. Do you reckon we tell them or not? Because it, I don't think it makes a difference. Still race it's it? Good for us. Yeah, as long as they don't go f crazy in that first thousand. Oh, stop it. Stop oh, it. Right. Just let them f go crazy, mate. Honestly. I want to phone Darcy. We've got to keep our length. Hey, mate, when we transition out of the start, we've got to in head breeze, we've got to maintain length and finishes. Coach John Bowes has made a shift in seats for today's race. Four-seat Sam Green has moved into stroke. 
Stroke seat sits the length and the rhythm for the crew, for the seven guys behind him to follow. Through shifting the strokeman, the whole crew dynamic can change. In the GPS regattas, although we you know, had a commanding lead, we always had a problem with maintaining stroke rate and we wanted to change something in the boat to see like, how it would react. Quick start, quick start. Let's go. Squeeze, build, snap. Putting Sam back into stroke seat, he probably, he was a bit more aggressive. He wasn't as concerned with the feeling, he was just concerned with getting those numbers right. And at that time in the season, that's what we had to do. Come on, fellas. Yeah, I'm pretty well, mate. Not get, not get angry with it, but um, the ability to you know, see other crews next to me and have a look and make sure I can know where I am in the race and then you know, not try and slip down to any other boats and you know, make sure that I'm trying, you know, stroke the crew to, to win. The choppy water is providing more resistance than normal, but each crew is equally affected. Because I've had some dirty strokes in there. I've had some dirty strokes. I suppose they all have. It's 322. They're 250 the other day. Go on, Sammy! As expected, Scotch have raced to a sizeable lead. The Scotch crew, they're a formidable crew. They are undefeated in Victoria. They were a big, like, strong crew, very powerful all at the same time, which is what you want in a crew. The second's good for us, mate, for the final. Bury yourself. Really tough blokes. They didn't row too well, but they can move a boat, and that's what it's about. It's about who can move the boat the quickest. Only needing a top four finish to qualify for the final, Nudgee are in second place. Race, please, come on! Look! Look! They're coming back, sure. Sydney's Shore School are closing in, and the Queenslanders will need to maintain rhythm and poise to the very finish. Fifty's here, and it's ours! Let's take it now with rhythm! It was a little bit more ticker in there. Stiff wind. Yeah, oh well, everyone's, everyone's got to row on it. Yeah. We might bloody ease that gearing. It's going to be, it's, the wind's not going to be as strong tomorrow. Yeah. We're going to knock that half a centimetre off the inboard. It's a satisfying result as the crew managed to hold off an advancing shore and secure their place in the national final. That's, that's character building, mate. Character building. Well done, Nudgy. Good work, boys. Good stuff, Nudgy. Well done, Sammy. What do you think? Well, I thought they seven minutes. <laughs> seven minutes? Yeah, for that race, 6.7 back. They really had a dip in the third five. Like, yeah. we really lost a lot of speed there. Sammy stepped us to the line to his credit. Yeah, sure, we're coming up on us. So I thought, yeah. here we go. It's a measure of the high expectations of the Nudgy rowing program when qualifying for a national final is met with a hint of disappointment. Was it? Yeah, well, mate, rough water. Seven minute race. Good work. Good, good race. No, you should race. Oh, come on. All we're doing is getting complaints rather than saying, oh, this is fantastic. Oh, boys, get a couple of oars each. Today was the perfect day, the perfect day to pound the rock. I don't know whether you, you really hit that, Darcy. You should be uh, you know, really happy with the, today. It's going to be not just one or two, it's going to be four crews just hammering it out. And there'll be some crews out there that aren't trying to win it. They'll be trying to get third. They want to get on the podium. So you're going to have to be on your medal the whole way down. How nervous are you feeling? Yeah, nervous. Very nervous. nervous. Here comes Linda. One more. One more race, girls. Should we say a Hail Mary? That's son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now at the hour of our death. Amen. Okay, boys, we've set it for you. Divine intervention or not, the fate of the eight lies in the execution of their race plan. Well, this is it, guys. The end of a long journey. You had a great race yesterday. We've got better every regatta. The party starts at the 1,000. We've got to pound the rock in that third five. It's been a great journey. This is a great way to finish it off. I really mean it. Everything's there for us. Everything's there for you guys. 
You can tell by the body language, you're ready to go. I just want it to be their, their best race for them, like that they're happy with the race. Now I just, yeah, come off and no matter what, they've, they've enjoyed themselves. I've got no more to say except I've really enjoyed, you know, for most of you guys, two years. Poor old Pat has been three years. Um, it's just been absolutely wonderful. In those moments, maybe just say a few key words to the boys about what I'm looking for, being ready, and then getting them focused mentally. Just trying to keep it controlled and let the nerves be there. Like, the nerves are such a good thing. You can use those nerves for adrenaline. It's two things, really. It's accepting the way you feel, and the second thing is, as you're leading up to that start line, you think about one thing, and that's, um, the first stroke, you're not thinking about the last one, you're not thinking about what you're going to be doing in the middle of the race, you're thinking about how you're going to attack that, the first stroke of the race. Go for a great start here. Come on boys, come on boys. Oh, Sam and Darcy just need to have that eye connection, that chat, chat, chat. Come on Sam. Six months of training for six minutes of pain. I know. probably 750 metres into the race and yeah, the crew settled a little bit but we're still at race pace. It happens normally about for me the 750, it's just body screaming, it's just an awful experience because you realise you've got 1250 metres to go and it's just going to get worse. You kind of just hit a wall where you just need oxygen and like it becomes really hard to breathe. It feels like you gotta like exert yourself just to get a breath in. Probably with like 250 metres in, like I usually start feeling the pain straight away. Energy! You'd be kicking yourself when you cross the line if you didn't give 100%. So I think about it as one stroke at a time and by the time you realise that you're actually rowing, you'll be done. Gotta go up, we're moving on scotch! That's it, and the legs are going! Yes, Najee! Pound it! Pound! One point now! 750 to go, last time together. It's really just how far can you push your mind to push away the pain. It's there going, we gotta pick it up. One point with me, Sambo. Where are they? Come on. Come on. No, come on. Come on, Darcy, get him going, get him going, Darcy. Oh no, stick with them, the blue boat. The blue boat. And we're gonna go crazy when they get up here, we're sorry. We're gonna stand up and, and block a view and scream. This is their, our boys' last race for, you know, their school. Scotch have pulled ahead, but in typical nudgy spirit, they refuse to give in. We still got in reach. Go on, let's go for it. We gotta go, we're starting to move. I want to pick up from you, Gassi. Come on, Nudgy, oh, you can do this. Oh, you can do this, Nudgy. Now, now we're coming up to the finish line. Let's move. Nudgy are only rowing to win, but Bright and Grandma are closing in. Nudgy! Go, Nudgy! It's a dog fight. We're going. Ready, transition. And let's go again now. Stick with them. Stick with them, Nudgy.
Well done. Well done. Well done. It was a good race. They'll be so disappointed. I just hope they're just so happy with that race, like as in their actual performance. I'm going down. Okay. Yeah, me too. Hello. I oh, know. What a race. What a race. That was just awesome. Awesome. They're, they're, they've got their heads held. They're just exhausted. All right. I'll uh, bring you back in a second. Love you too. Bye. It was a good feeling knowing that all the boys had put their heart into it and we had worked so hard to get up to where we did then. It was happiness that we went out there and did our job. It wasn't we went out there to come second, we went out there to win. Everyone in that boat gave it everything and you could tell that we got to end our season with a moment like that, with a last race like that. You're right. You get all emotional for me. They've done all right. They need this in their life. Yeah, and okay? yeah. they can't win all the time. They've done well. Yeah, they have. They yeah. really have. Yeah, they have. And bonding. We wanted to win it. We wanted to try as hard as we could to win it. Honestly, I don't remember half of it. We had a meeting the night before with all the boys and um, Jimmy said so that we want to do it for Bosie. We want to go put out something that we're proud of and that he can be proud of. You can see they were trying. Uh, they were trying to, to like keep on, yeah, hold on to them. This much of a bow ball? Like, like, can I have a look at that photo? And can we do this? Yeah. It was a great race. Absolutely fabulous race. No, I'm still shaking a bit. Yeah. Yeah, boys. Well done, Nudgie. I was spent. We did everything we could. There was tears all around. All the boys had gone through such a big process together. Most of us starting rowing together in grade seven and ending up on a national stage in grade 12. I don't think, I don't think Pat's got any energy left. <laughs> they fought a good fight. <laughs> they did, oh, it was a fabulous fight. Should we yell out, bye boys? No, Pat jumping in the cock seat today. No. <laughs> Sport educates you in ways not often found in textbooks or classrooms. That failure is simply a lesson. That victory is only a brief moment in time. And that resilience will ensure that these rowers still have many chapters to go in their sporting journey and their school year. Well, this season was definitely the best season of my life. I put in the most training I ever have and got the most reward out of it. I think they were an incredible crew. They had enormous expectation enormous pressure and they performed every time. Battle of the Laughs, great bunch of blokes. Nothing that we really did ever really phased us. We worked well. It's not that we didn't have our conflicts, but we all went through them and we put everything aside just for the bend of the boat. Overall, it was pretty close to a perfect season. You could have going undefeated in the GPS. Especially for myself, being with John this year was an absolute joy to be a part of. The boys that we had in the crew were all exceptional gentlemen. Every day, I, uh, I like to think I show gratitude to the fact that you know, I can go down and, and help these guys. Sometimes we get the result, sometimes we don't. But I love being on the journey with the with, you know, good young men. Good young, nudgy men. For more information on the Nudgee College Rowing Program, go to nudgee.com.